here's a short introduction on how to get started with Python and the GoPygo robot. Start up idle as your work environment. There are two flavors, one for Python 2 and one for Python 3. The GoPygo robot can work for either one of them, but the default setup is only for Python 2, so we'll choose that one. This brings up the Python shell, where you can do some live coding. That's when you enter lines of code and they get run right away, similar in a sense to live music. The first line to enter is as follow. From GoPygo import star and press return. And nothing happens. That's actually good. That means our code worked. What that line means is that we want the shell to get the GoPygo library. That's a toolbox with all the GoPygo related commands. And make it available to us. The star means we want everything from that toolbox. But we haven't asked the GoPygo to do anything yet. We're just making sure we have all the required tools. Put your GoPygo upside down, as we don't want it to go off roaming. And let's make it go forward. I need to enter forward and a set of parentheses. The parentheses are needed by Python to know that we want to use a tool, in this case, the forward tool. This is what we call a function. Functions always need parentheses. Enter and watch the GoPygo go. We need to stop this robot now. The function to stop it is simple enough. Stop and parentheses. Stop. A few more commands are left, right, and backward. If you're coming from scratch, you're familiar with those. You can now control your GoPygo via live coding. Congrats! Live coding is fun, but if you want to create more advanced programs, you don't want to type them all each time. So we need to be able to save the program in a file. Go to File New and get a file editor. Our first line needs to be the same as before. From GoPygo, import, star, and return. Then forward, parentheses, and return. Nothing happens here because the code is not run. Let's keep going with left, right, backward, and stop. Save the file as first code. Now the file is saved to disk and we can run it. We can either go to run then run module or remember this F5 keyboard shortcut which is much handier. When we run the code Python will take us back to the shell where we did the live coding. All conversation with Python will happen there. But wait, nothing happened. What? Oh wait, that's because Python is incredibly fast. And the GoPygo did receive all commands and executed them all, ending with the stop command. And we saw nothing. So we have to go back to our code. We'll need to get another library that has to do with time. And from that library, we need to import the sleep function. We could import everything by using star, but we really only need sleep. Now we can put some sleep commands, which are similar to the wait block in Scratch. Notice that I'm putting a value inside the parentheses. That's the number of seconds that sleep should last. Values inside parentheses are passed on to the function. They're called arguments, and different functions need different arguments. Save the modified file and hit F5 to run it. Your GoPygo should be on its way doing a little choreography like that. Voila, congratulations on your first Python code.